The second round of the Blancpain GT Sprint Series sees the cars head to Brands Hatch in the United Kingdom. We've got the qualifying race coming up for you in a couple of moments' time. My name is Jack Nichols. Alongside me in the commentary box is John Watson. And down in the pits, we have Bruce Jones ahead of this one-hour qualifying race that will set the grid for the main race coming up later on. But right now at Brands Hatch, we are having a moment of reflection on the grid for uh, the celebration of uh, VE Day. And uh, that has just come to a conclusion down there on the grid. Alongside me is uh, John Watson and uh, John, a classic track. And we came here last year for the Blancpain Sprint Series and had some great racing. International GTs around Brands is something special. Well, first of all, Brands has been blessed with another beautiful day here in Kent. And uh, we've got a wonderful grid of Blancpain Sprint, and, uh, sprint cars. And uh, no surprise, the star of the qualifying was Lawrence Van Thor. For all the right reasons in qualifying, he did drop it big time in free practice on Saturday morning, but redeemed himself with an outstanding lap, 123.269, virtually half a second ahead of the second place Lamborghini, Nicky Katzberg behind the wheel. Car to look out for on the second row of the grid, the Nissan GTR, Craig Dolby, Sean Walkinshaw. Very, very quick car, and Craig Dolby behind the wheel at the start is up for it. He says, I'm going to have the Lambo and the Audi beside me, probably before we get into paddock. And then I'm going to push, I'm going to push Lawrence Van Thor all the way. So let's hear from Robin Freitz, the man who shares the pole position car with Van Thor. He's with Bruce. Robin Friends, welcome to sports car racing. You tried to get started at Nogaro, it didn't happen, but uh, today here at Brands Hatch, the number one Audi starting on pole position, your teammate Lawrence Van Thor at the wheel. Yeah, it's a good start of uh, this weekend, even though FP1, FP2, we didn't drive uh, a lot. We have lots of problems. We had also a bit of a crash. So putting on pole and qualify is a, is a bit of a surprise. See how good uh, the team did this job. So uh, we are looking forward for the race. Well, enjoy it as your first attempt at Brands Hatch. Yes, my very first one. Uh, I only did 10 laps so far, so I need to do some more. Best of luck. Thank you, Robin. Thank you bit of a baptism of, baptism of fire then for the young Dutchman. It's 15.7 degrees, the air temperature here at Brands. It feels a lot hotter already because the sun is beating down on the circuit. 24.5 degrees, the track temperature, a bit of union flag bunting as well for the spectators that are about to watch. Yeah, just interesting hearing Robin Freens describing his 10 laps only at Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit. The number of drivers here for the first time, not least of all Bernd Schneider. And this track, Brands Hatch, the Grand Prix circuit, I mean, really, what a wonderful racetrack. You've got all the famous names of British Grand Prix racing after all the corners, with the exception of Paddock. There was never a, a Grand Prix driver called Paddock that I'm aware of. <laughs> but all the other corners are named after Jim Clark, Graham Hill, Surtees, McLaren, and Barry Sheen, even for motorcycles being recognised. Yeah, but absolutely. for many of the drivers, first time here at Brands Hatch, walked the track on Friday, and some of them came in shaking <laughs> because they realised that this is a proper racetrack, and there are very solid banks close to the side of the racetrack. And they're accustomed to having the wide open spaces where they can make all the mistakes of the day and get away with it. Well, so this is proper motor racing on a proper racetrack. Absolutely. Let's have a look at the grid. On pole position on the left-hand side is Lawrence Van Thor starting that WRT Audi. Alongside him on the front row is Nicky Katzberg. Row two is Christopher Mees on the left. Craig Dolby in that Nissan John was talking about on the right-hand side. The car he's sharing with Sean Walkinshaw. Then the two BMW Team Brazil cars. Vardena Brito out qualifying Sergio Jimenez. So it's Brito on the right, Jimenez on the... Uh, uh, sorry, Jimenez on the left as we look at it. And then on the next row of the grid, Marcus Fingelhock just behind uh, the other BMW of Joe Osborne, the Triple Eight entry, which is great to have that here this weekend. Then we've got Rob Bell starting that McLaren on the left. He's in front of Bernd Schneider on the right. Then we've got um, Frank Stippler and Norbert Siedler on the next row of the grid. Marco Asma making his debut this season. He's in that Mercedes on the left-hand side. He's alongside uh, Philippe Salaquada. Then it's Jules Simkoviak on the left, uh, just in front of Stefan Ortelli, with uh, Philip Vlasic and Thomas Fjordback completing the grid. And uh, I guess the, the guys to pick out from the back there is the Monegasque pairing of uh, Ortelli and Raquelmi because they are effectively leading the championship. The leading the championship is Max Martin and Dirk Muller after winning in Nagaro, but they were just doing a one-off appearance. So it's essentially Raquelmi and Ortelli leading the championship, but they just didn't get it hooked up in qualifying and are going to start 16th on the grid. Well, part of the reason they didn't get it hooked up was Stefan Ortelli actually made a fundamental mistake 
And that was in this corner here, Pedicle Ben got it wrong going into it and ran very wide onto the gravel on the outside. And that sort of blew his best chances of putting in a lap time, which we know Watelli is more than capable of. So therefore, in a way, he let down Raquel Me, the young driver, again, a young single-seater driver, making his way into GT racing for this first season. And consequently, much, much further down the grid than we would expect. Let's have a look at the grid then ahead of the race. Pole position is Lawrence Van Thor in the WRT Audi. Nicky Katzberg alongside him, very surprised with that qualifying performance. First time he's been here in eight years. Christopher Mead and Craig Dolby are on the second row of the grid. Then it's the two BMW Team Brazil cars looking to consolidate their lead after a superb performance last time out in Nagaro. Seventh on the grid is the 888 BMW, a one-off entry for Brands Hatch from the 888 racing team. Norbert Siegler will start in 12th place in that bright green 333 Rinaldi Ferrari. Marco Asmer and Philippe Salacuada are on the next row of the grid ahead of Simkoviak and the Stefan Ortelli, uh, Stefan Raquelmi pairing which is going to be one to watch with Vlasic and the Fjordbrak brothers completing the 18 car grid. If you didn't manage to watch the qualifying session yesterday, the other big news, I suppose, is that the 84 Bentley is out of contention. Vance on Abril and Maximilian Buch won't be racing here because they crashed their HTP machine. Well, Max Buch crashed his HTP machine coming out of Paddock Hill Bend, had a big hit into the wall and he was out of the race. Talking to him this morning, he was so disappointed because he thinks the Bentley is a very, very strong car here. And uh, unfortunately, he won't be out in the race and that's no points for them this weekend and they are definite championship challenges. Through the final corner then come our pole sitter, Laurence Van Thor on pole position on the left-hand side in the Audi. On the right-hand side of Zwi, look at it, is Nicky Katzberg in the Lamborghini. The lights come on here at Brands Hatch. We get ready to go racing, and when we will, it'll be one hour of frantic action around the Grand Prix circuit. We go racing, and it's a very good start from Katzberg on the outside. The rear-facing camera there from the Ferrari further back in the pack, but it looks as though Lawrence Van is going to hold the lead of their race as they drop down through Paddock Hill Bend. Katzberg's hanging on around the outside, but Van Thor still has the inside line for Druids. They're going to go side by side all the way around. Van Thor now consolidates the position up at the front. It looks like the Nissan has made um has dropped back a position. Also, the 888 BMW of Joe Osborne has managed to get past both of the BMW Team Brazil cars. And Joe Osborne looking to move down the inside, going into Surtees. Craig Dolby doesn't let him do that. Dolby had hoped to make a better start, try and get ahead of one of the two cars ahead of him and try and challenge Laurence Van Thor. That hasn't happened so far. So this is the look back to Marco Asmus. Uh, Mercedes on board with the 333 green Ferrari that's looking towards the inside there. Not quite close enough, but there is the 888. Uh, BMW Z4, great start then from Joe Osborne, he's up into fifth position, uh, a few little darts back uh, in the pack, but no one able to quite make a manoeuvre just yet, and look at that, Stefan Ortelli's dropped to the back of the field now, so they're really not getting it hooked up so far this weekend, but it's Van Thor leads, he was on pole by four tenths of a second, from second back to ninth, was separated by the same amount, and there's a look up the inside from Marco Asma, and the Ferrari's gone wide and is in the gravel. Not good news there for Norbert Siedler, and he's going to drop to the back of the field now. Very lucky not to end up on the wall because the grass has been slippery all weekend. A lot of rain fell before the weekend got underway, uh, and it's still up at Sterling's Bend, still a very moist part of the racetrack, but, but the grass bit is anyway. There's Robin Freitz watching on with uh, Stefan Rattel, and there's a dart to the inside line, the Bentley forcing its way through. Great move from Simkoviak. He goes past Marco Bonanomi in the ISR Audi as they now run up towards Druids. But at the end of lap one, it's Lawrence Van Thor leading the way. Second, Nicky Katzberg. And into the pits comes the Ferrari. I wonder if they had a front right puncture then because they did just seem to run wide without making a mistake. So I wonder if it was a puncture. Well, the, the Mercedes got alongside going into Sterling's Bend, maybe forcing the Ferrari. Hit the curb aggressively could be the reason the tyre got cut down. Of course, now the car back in, well, making its way slowly down the pit lane. But there's the battle for the lead and Lawrence Van Thor so far not actually pulling away at the kind of pace one would have thought from his qualifying pace Nicky Katzberg hanging in Christopher Mies behind Craig Dolby in the Nissan and then the rest of the field there we see Ferrari back out on track but all they can hope to do is just make the best of it the reason that Ortelli is at the back of the field is because he went uh, off at turn five so that is uh I think that's at Hawthorne's that uh, he would have gone wide, and that's the reason that the number three car is right at the back of the field. A little look at the four car of Frank Stippler there, getting involved in some fights too. But uh, Van Thor and Katzberg, I think, are going to be going at it for this race. And uh, Van Thor now, as they come across the line to complete the second lap of racing, is seven tenths of a second clear of the Lamborghini behind. 
and uh, they're, they're also pulling away from the Brazilian BMWs. Uh, Craig Dolby and Joe Osborne are pretty much tied together for that fourth place. It's Dolby in the MRS GT Nissan, then Osborne behind, and then this long pack further back. Albert Von Turnen Tax is there on the left-hand side. He'll be taking over from the second-place car. Very twitchy on the exit of the corner. Therefore, uh, the second of the uh, McLarens in the hands of uh, Philip Vlasic. And there is the first of the McLarens in the hands of Rob Bell running up in ninth position, the white 650S that's about to flash through Surtees now. There it goes with the orange uh, front on it. As they now head down through Pilgrim's Drop. So uh, it's a very quick first sector again for Nicky Katzberg. He's done the personal best, uh, sorry, he's done the best of the race in the, the, the first sector on these first uh, two proper laps of racing. Yeah, but uh, over the previous lap it was factually to the advantage of the race leader, Lawrence Van Thor, who has got a three-quarter of a second advantage as they are on their third lap. And back at the, the BMW is running and currently in uh, sixth place. Valdino Brito, yep. who made his Blancpain debut here last year uh, in the 77 car and uh, ended up having a pretty uh, good result uh, at, at the end of it as they come into the final corner now. And through clearways, out onto the start, finish straight once more. And the two Brazilians coming across the line. They missed uh, the first race in Nagaro to complete in the Brazilian Stock Car Championship, which Caca Bueno actually managed to win, so uh, at least it was worth going back out to Brazil and missing Nagaro. He missed a race victory in Nagaro, but he gained a race victory in Brazil, so it sort of worked out okay for him. I think the one in Nagaro was maybe the more important in the, in the sense of an international event. The one in Brazil was very much the Nationals Touring Car Championship. In the meantime, Lawrence Van Thor, in spite of being eclipsed in the first and third sectors in terms of quickest overall, still is pulling out a couple of tenths a second advantage on the lap uh, over Nicky Katzberg, Christopher Meese a further second behind, and then Craig Dolby, again, a second behind Christopher Meese in fourth place. And then just eight tenths of a second behind uh, between... Uh Dolby and Osborne in the battle over fourth spot. Great to see the 888 BMW doing so well. They did enter uh, Baku at the end of last season and were general, generally running in the middle of the grid. Uh, but great to see them running further up towards the order now. Here's Norbert Siedler. He's running 18th and last in the field at the moment. 40 seconds down on the rest of the pack. And that's a shame because he and Marco Seafried uh, are a very quick pair of drivers and it's a shame that they've been pushed that far back. I mean, Norbert Siedler's lap time, now on his first flying lap, having made the pit stop to replace a, left, a right front tyre, still a very good lap time, not as quick as the leading car, but pretty much at the pace of the top, anybody in the top six, so the Ferrari's got the pace now, it's got that clear air, and of course, but all the time last, having to come in, change the tyre, get back out, is all for really nothing at all. 54 minutes to go then, uh, fastest third sector has just been set by Craig Dolby in the Nissan and uh, as a result he has closed the gap fractionally to Christopher Meese who's currently in third position in the number two WRT Audi so the top four uh, in the race are the top four uh, as they started on the grid. Great to see Nicky Katzberg and that writer engineering Lamborghini looking quick again because they were nowhere in uh, Nagaro, but they've switched back to smaller front wheels here that they've been running for the past 10 years. In Nagaro, they thought they'd uh, go for bigger front wheels, but it changed the whole sort of dynamic of the car. And as a result, uh, they were absolutely nowhere. So they switched back to smaller wheels and now it's going well. Here's a look at the replay of the start. Vanther on the inside. Katzberg holds it all the way around the outside. Goodness me. Well, I think that was Ortelli. was super close to the barriers at pit exit. And uh, Katzberg did well to hold it around the outside, but couldn't quite make any progress. And Joe Osborne's passed the Brazilian BMWs by the exit of Paddock Hill Bend, so he just must have got a rocket start. Well, I think part of that is just the local knowledge of the racetrack, knowing where you can and cannot place your car, particularly in the opening lap when you've got traffic all around. You make your own luck, you make your own space. And that's what Joe Osborne did. He went from the fourth row of the grid, eighth place, all the way up to fifth. Yeah, and this is the view back from Norbert Seidler in the early stages, coming up into the hairpin at Druids. And they're all getting very busy behind. And I think there was a bit of contact there between uh, the McLaren and one of the ISR Audis. And, oh, goodness me. That's, uh, that was a, a bit of a visit from uh, the, the Fjord back uh, Audi. No, I think that was Bononomi, actually. And then this was... Then him running wide later on, we think, with a front right puncture. He certainly here had to come in and change that right front. And, uh, well, the onboard camera just shows you how much can be dragged back onto a track as this battle again squeezing, coming down into bottom bend. This is the battle over 15th position. It's uh, Vlasic leading it in the 
Attempto Racing McLaren. Then right up behind him, he's got Marco Bonanomi uh, with Stefano Telli behind. So actually, Vlasic's just got past Bonanomi. Yep. And uh, then in behind them in the 16th position is Stefano Telli, former Le Mans winner, running down in uh, 16th position. He won't be best pleased with how this is going because they won, of course, the qualifying race in Nagaro. They won the first race of the season. So he and Raquel will be very keen to try and get past. But here come our race leaders. Van Thor's lead up to one and a half seconds now, ahead of Nicky Katzberg in second in the right of Lamborghini. Third is the number two car still of Christopher Meese for the Belgian Audi Club. Fourth is Craig Dolby and fifth is Joe Osborne as they all start to just stretch out a little bit. This is the closest action on the circuit as Ortelli tries to find a way through. It's, it's I mean, he's, really going to it. he's going to struggle because the pace of the cars ahead of him is so close to his own natural pace. And part of the Brands Hatch circuit is there's not really what I would call a, correct, a proper straight. Every bit that's straight actually is a long, shallow curve. And then leading into somewhere like Paddock Hill Bend, you've got to be up the inside and parallel to the car you want to get past. Otherwise, if you take a punt and assume you're going to get space, it's very unlikely. Van Saint Vos looking not necessarily concerned, but not used to seeing Stefan Ortelli, one of the stars on the WRT ID team over many seasons, running so far back. But that is the penalty of having a poor qualifying. Absolutely, and with this being the qualifying race to set up for the main race later on today, it, it all is a bit of a concertina effect, a, a cumulative effect as the, as the day progresses. So Van Thor in the other WRT Audi is still leading the way, so strong performance from them. Uh, Marcus Wingerhock's up into eighth place as they drop down Pilgrim's Drop and turn into the right-hander of Hawthorns. I mean, looking at uh, Stefan Ortelli, he is getting closer to the tail of Bonin. I mean, now that the McLaren has broken free from this battle, which was a three-car battle or a four-car battle at one point, and uh, Stefan Ortelli clearly has got more pace in his WRT Audi than that of... Bonanomi, so I think Otelli will be waiting. There's only a couple of places where he thinks he's, or he imagines he's got an opportunity to make that pass. And one of them will be up into Paddock. It'll take a big commitment from the Monagas driver. He's got to be right on the tail as we go forward to the top four, fourth place, Craig Dolby. Yep, we go on board with the Nissan then. Down into Graham Hill Bend. Downshift, swings it in, uses all the runoff on the exit. Now heading down towards Surtees. There's a variety of entries into the corner you can take. It's a great pace to overtake. Again, you've got to be alongside the car, and if you get up the inside, then you can really block the person that you're overtaking, slow them down to your pace, and then take control of the corner. I mean, a Hawthorne. Carry Just a lot more gear. speed. Yeah, you can carry a lot more speed going into Hawthorne because it is actually quite a heavily cambered corner. From the driver's perspective, you don't quite see that, but. If you walk the track, you realise just how much camber there is. Then down into Dingle Dell, the compression, then up the hill. You can't see the apex. You've got to just make a commitment to it. We heard James Nash talking about actually getting all four wheels off the ground going through Dingle Dell. As an ex-touring car driver, I understand why. <laughs> Absolutely. Down into the final uh, corner at Clearways comes the 88 car of Nicky Katzberg. His teammate still not looking particularly relaxed. <laughs> Um, and uh, Albert will be getting in the car uh, later when the pit stop window opens in, what, 10 minutes time, uh, 20 minutes time. But they will probably stay out for as, as long as possible with Nicky Katzberg at the wheel. This is the first time he's raced on the full Grand Prix circuit at Brands. He raced in Formula Ford here some eight years ago. Meanwhile, this is the battle over eighth position. Marcus Winkelhock in the number six uh, Phoenix Racing Audi under pressure from the Attempto 650S McLaren of Rob Bell behind and then Bernd Schneider keeping an eye on it all in the GT Russian Mercedes. Yeah, again, one of the artists, Nicky meyer melnhoff and Marcus Winkelhock. Winkelhock did the qualifying and he never quite seemed to get it hooked up the way, again, with Winkelhock we know it was capable of doing in an Audi. So Nicky meyer melnhoff sort of slightly perplexed as to where that pace had gone in qualifying yesterday. And they were saying... It, uh, you know, I suppose it was making excuses, but they're saying when you're in a one-car team and there's two drivers, compare that to the WRT squad who are running four cars with eight drivers. They're gathering so much more data over the course of a free practice session. They do. I mean, a lot of that data is relevant only, in fact, to one particular car in that four-car team. Not every one of the eight drivers will drive the same as any of the other seven. So while you do get the data, there's only a small amount of that data that will be relevant to the car that you're in. And uh, you take someone like Lawrence Van Thor, he might have a car set up, which is quite different to that 
that we see with Marcus Winkelhock who's further down the field so across the line comes our uh, race leader Lawrence Van Thor to complete uh, lap number 9 and start lap number 10 this is the battle over 8th position Winkelhock, Bell and Schneider and I think this is Bernd Schneider's first trip to the Brands Hatch Grand Prix circuit which is uh, astonishing considering the the amount of racing he's done over the years. Yeah, I mean, he did race here oh, many, many years ago in a race series called Inter-Series, which is about as different to that to GT cars. Let's hear from Albert Von Turn and Taxis. He's going to be taking over from the second place car soon. How's he feeling? Albert Von Turn and Taxis, when we get to the driver change, you're taking over the car that's in second position. And just while you're standing here talking, running over the curbs at the edge of the circuit, Nicky Katzberg's really pushing on in second. Yeah, Nicky's been pushing really hard, as we have seen. Um, he's uh, performed incredibly so far, and um, there's a lot of pressure on me now. I hope I can bring home this result. No, pressure's what you drivers thrive on, isn't it, Albert? Come on. Yes, absolutely. That's what we're here for. And how about the circuit? It's, it's no easy circuit, is it here? Not at all, not at all. First time for me, um, very exciting to be here, but very difficult. And it takes a bit, of a bit of a while to get used to these blind corners, very fast corners, not a lot of room for error. So it's, um, it's a big challenge. Well, best of luck, thank you. Yeah, it was amazing listening to Albert von Tron and Tax as they're describing a racetrack. Which, you know, everybody who races in Great Britain, this is their home circuit in many respects. And they take all these corners for granted. And because most racetracks today are big wide open spaces, this is almost an anachronism in terms of contemporary motor racing. But well, it is a proper racetrack. I wish we had more circuits that have got things that really define the racetrack. And the definition of this racetrack is having barriers close to the side and lots of trees. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we have plenty of them in the United Kingdom. This is the battle continuing. Over 15th place, Marco Bononomi in the ISR Audi, ISR switching over from single-seater racing and a look to the inside at Graham Hill Bend, nicely done from Stefan Otelli, Bononomi holds it around the outside, they're going absolutely side by side down towards Surtees, but Otelli's got the overlap now and he should be able to get that job done, Bononomi still hanging on around the outside but there goes through Otelli into 15th place, a nice move. Yes, I mean it, that was well judged opportunity came coming down the hill from Druids up the inside into at what was Graham Hill Bend, bottom bend, Bononomi really maybe slightly unaware that Otelli was making that lunge. The danger for Bonanomi was he ran very, very wide in the exit. You might say that was force majeure. You might say it was just force Otelli. But <laughs> you're not allowed to run all four wheels off the grass. Let's look at it again. Tries to recover, but it's too late. Look how far off track Bonanomi has gone. Had he regained that position, it's possible he may have been penalised for that because that's one of the no-nos here at Brands Hatch. Not to use more than two wheels off the track, particularly in, in Graham Hill Bend. But a great work from, uh, and you can see the sort of reserved look on Philippe Salacuada's face, the teammate of Marco Bononomi, seeing his car drop down to 16th position. Here is our race leader, though, Lawrence Van Thor. Four seconds clear of Nicky Katzberg in second place at the moment, up into Hawthorns. It always looks like it's a downhill into Hawthorns from that camera angle, doesn't it? But uh, it really is very uphill as, uh, as it comes back. It's just because you've got the drop in the background, it always yeah, looks and different how it is. Yeah, optical illusion. And uh, I mean, the, the, the thing about Brands Hatch is this elevation change is very much out the back of the racetrack coming through Dingledell, through Sheen Curve and then into Stirlings, which is a very straightforward corner. But it's those curves on the outside that have caught so many drivers out in the past and it can really set a car off and a, a major tank slapper. You're lucky if you can catch it. Now, the 888 BMW uh, is starting to be caught by Valdeno Brito in the 77 BMW Team Brazil car. And uh, I wonder if they think they can get up into the top five, the Brazilians. They started on the uh, third row of the grid. Uh, Bruce has managed to find Antonio Herman, the boss of the squad. Let's hear from him now. Antonio Herman, we had the dream result for BMW Team Brazil at Nagaro, but it's proving a little harder at the moment. Both your cars outside the top five, only just though, how high can they rise? Now we are on a good pace. I think that the second part of the race should be better for us. And I'm very confident that, that both cars will be in the party in the end of the race. And how about tyre wear here at Brands Hatch? Are you on top of all of that? Brands Hatch, it's a, it's a very nice circuit 
for us, for the BMW and for the Brazil. Brazil have a very good story here in Brands Hat and uh, we intend to continue with this uh, lovely story. Well, let's see. Best of luck, Antonio. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yes, BMW Team Brazil had their first Blancpain podium here uh, last season. I think it was a double podium for Kaka Bueno and uh, Sergio Jimenez. And this is uh, Baudeno Brito and Attila Abreu were on board with. And they all basically made their Brands Hatch debut here last season, apart from Jimenez, because he had raced here in Formula Renault when he was Lewis Hamilton's teammate at Manor back in the sort of mid uh, to early 2000s. But uh, down they come now into the final corner at Clearways. Yeah, we're just saying that uh, Brito was catching up to Joe Osborne, who made that really great start in the opening lap. But now he's falling back, or the Brazil BMW moving forward. Uh, as BMW is a car really that is pretty ideally suited to the layout, the rise and falls of this Brands Hatch circuit. Fairly high downforce car. Uh, top speed here, not a critical item, as it may be in other circuits. So BMW particularly competitive. Yep, absolutely. And uh, the gap between Osborne and Brito is eight tenths of a second. That is Joe Osborne in the Triple Eight car. We can see up in front one of the most successful uh, British racing teams of all time, really, in the British Touring Car Championship, especially. He made the switch to GTs in uh, 2013 and have since then raced in the British GT Championship in the Blanc Pan Sprint and Endurance Series as well. So these three M BMWs are pretty close to each other. Uh, Marcus Winkelhocker's fought off the challenge behind from Rob Bell and is starting to close in on, on these two as well. Winkelhock on that last lap uh, did a 26-2, which was some um, three or four tenths of a second quicker than Osborne and Brito battling over fifth place. So they're all just starting to close in on one another and uh, the pit stop window opens uh, reasonably soon. There's Lee Moll, the uh, co-driver of uh, Joe Osborne. And they are, don't forget, in the Pro-Am class, comfortably leading the Pro-Am class at the moment. Um, the second car in that class is in 10th place. That's the uh, Bernd Schneider and Alexei Karachev car as they come across the line. Well, just under four minutes to go before the pit lane will open and I would assume that people like Joe Osborne and others are going to stay out as long as they possibly can particularly if you've got a good track position if you're in the midst of a battle I mean for example Otelli who you'd imagine would be kept out but it might be opportune to bring Otelli in and let him hand over the car to Stefan Raquelny maybe find a better track position and therefore maybe make a little bit more progress Otelli still stalled out in 15th place he has got four seconds of clear air though at the moment or telly so that's not uh, too bad in terms of track position but maybe that will change as the racing progresses but look at this Winkelhock really closing in now on the back of Sergio Jimenez the last lap there was you know a good couple of seconds between them now as they cross the line it's down to eight tenths of a second possibly less than that as they swing through the right hander of Hawthorne's Winkelhock going very wide well you, you can do that on the exit of Hawthorne's assuming it the track is fully dry but also the verge and the and the curbing is dry Saturday morning you couldn't get away with that so that's just a little bit of confidence but principally track knowledge and Marcus Winkelhock has got plenty of that and Kaka Bueno is watching on with interest his car in 7th place at the moment they were out qualified by their teammate in the 77 car as they turn into clearways once more to complete 15 laps of racing here at Brands Hatch in the second weekend of the Blanc Pan Sprint Series this is the qualifying race to set the grid for the main race coming up later on we haven't seen much of the battle for third place but that actually is beginning to close up again Christopher Meese only now less than half a second with a by about nine thousandths of a second under five seconds a five point half a second so that's a battle that's beginning to it's stretched out closing back up again and that'll be the final podium place of Christopher Meese can consolidate or Craig Dolby can get past because they're going to be handing over to the respective teammates Enzo Eid in the case of Christopher Meese and Sean Walkinshaw in the case of Craig Dolby so two drivers young drivers probably in terms of experience fairly equal as opposed to the incumbents in their respective cars yeah Walkinshaw has done less GT racing than uh, Enzo Eid in, Eid's done more there but Walkinshaw has done more in, uh, in other formulas, so you're right, they're probably sort of even as uh, Robin Freintz gets ready to head back out and uh, take over the car from Lawrence Van Thor, who's feeling a bit unwell over the course of the night, but uh, seems to be feeling 
pretty decent now to have a six second advantage. You know, when you feel unwell overnight, the best thing you can do is get into a race car, have a really good sweat, get rid of all the toxins that are in your system. I guarantee you, better than any commercial medical <laughs> potion available. So Van Thor leads 6.2 seconds clear of Nicky Katzberg. This is still the queue over fifth position. So you've got the white 888 BMW there of Joe Osborne, then the Brazilian BMW of Valdeno Brito, then a little gap back to Jimenez and Winkelhock, and, uh, and Rob Bell's in that fight as well. So it's all just concertinaing up a little bit. Bernd Schneider is the man who's dropped back in the bright yellow Mercedes SLS. He is out of this battle for the time being. Uh, meanwhile, has Stefan Ortelli made any progress? He's uh, taken a second out of uh, Philip Vlasic on that last lap in their battle over 14th place, but he's still some three seconds behind as this continuing squabble comes down under the bridge. There is Nick Katzberg leading the way as the pit stop window will open in about a minute's time. And he'll be handing over to Albert Von Tern and Taxis, who doesn't quite have the, the pace of Nicky Katzberg. They're not a pro-am pairing, but Katzberg is very much the works driver, and uh, Von Tern and Taxis started off as an amateur a couple of years ago in the, in the GT3 championship. I would say the aristocratic driver. Yes, yes exactly. <laughs> it's a, it's a pro-aris uh, car. As uh, Craig Dolby comes down into clearways, and so this is a battle that's beginning to heat up as the pit stop will be, or the pit stop lane, pit lane will be open in 30 seconds. And I just wonder whether they're going to keep Craig Dolby in the car and uh, keep the pressure up on Christopher Meese, or whether BW or the Audi WRT team will bring Meese in and hand over to Enz Weed. I suspect they're going to keep both drivers in their positions, probably until the latter end of the 10-minute pit stop window. I'd. Uh if it was me, I don't know what I'm doing, of course, but I'd uh, stick pit, the pit Dolby, stick pit the Dolby and uh, put Walkinshaw in in some, in some clear air, but then the guys have got to figure out where they would come out after their pit stop, because if they were to come back out in a battle further back, it could be more difficult. Then the Nissan really moves a lot, sort of through, it sort of wallows through the corners, it seems, from, from some of the onboards. It is a sort of tall, big car compared it, it to is. some it's of the lower It's got ones. a higher centre of gravity, for example, than the, the ID ahead of it. Uh, but it's got a, it's a very well sorted chassis, it's got a lot of horsepower, a lot of torque and uh, that's what Craig Dolby was hoping to take advantage of uh, on the start and the run up into Paddock or up into Druids. He wasn't able to do anything, pit stop window is now open. But Van Thor stays out and uh, Dolby now, I did, I did think he was looking slow coming out There's of one of the corners strange happened. and yeah, all of a sudden he's dropped back and he's right under pressure from uh, Joe Osborne. He, he suddenly lost a lot of ground and there's no obvious reason he's come. I think I wasn't sure he was going to try and come into the pits. Whether that was a driver error, we saw coming out of Surtees, the car may have a slight flinch and uh, whether he caught uh, the edge of the racetrack and that was what caused the car to look unsettled. But suddenly the gap between, it's now up to 4.3 seconds for that battle for third place where previously it was hovering around the half second. So he's lost the best part of four seconds on that last lap. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll keep an eye out on that, whether that's a recurring issue or just a driver mistake. Into the pits there is uh, Rob Bell. And yes, it was four seconds on that last lap that Craig Dolby lost. I did think just as he went out of our view, I thought yeah. he was going I mean, you know, was, pretty it, slow. It was in that Hawthorne to Westfield bend part of the racetrack, so he may have run wide uh, or something. We may see he's got an onboard camera. We might be able to get a review of what caused him to lose the best part of four seconds. In comes Stefan Ortelli to hand over to uh, Stefan Rakelmi. And that probably is the smart move for Ardi to make. Uh, again, it'll all be about where will Rakelmi rejoin the race and hopefully he will benefit from making that rather early stop and getting out in what will be relatively clear air because more and more cars will be taking the opportunity in the remaining, what's eight minutes or just under eight minutes as the Number three, Audi makes his way down the pit lane now, Raquelny behind the wheel. And he's got relatively clear air ahead of him. And he's not really being bothered by anybody behind him. So another one of the Audis, the number two Audi. That's uh, Christo Christopher Meese and Enzoid. Into the pits comes the first of the two BMWs, Valdeno Brito, coming in to hand over to his teammate Attila Abreu. There is... Uh, Attila waiting and the BMW Team Brazil squad waiting as well. They won the pit stop challenge uh, a number of times last year. 
and will they be able to do it again today? A quick pit stop can win you an awful lot of time. Actually, you know what? To make this, the, this sport even more entertaining, maybe there should be points that are added into the championship for the best pit stop of the weekend. Why not? Well, suggest it. Well, I I've guess just you just it. have. <laughs> I've told the public, I've told the world. <laughs> so, out goes Attila Brew. Now, that looked like a pretty quick pit stop, actually, as they, uh, as they uh, come out onto the circuit once again. And they should be well clear of the McLaren of Kevin Estra. Uh, yeah. I've got, uh, I'm not sure, actually, where the McLaren of uh, Kevin Estra is. He's come into the pits already. There's a McLaren coming through the final corner now. Uh, race leader stays out, Lawrence Van Thorpe. And uh, then he's followed by Kevin Estra. So uh, Estra a long way back from the uh, Brazilian BMW, as would have been well, I mean, expected. Kevin Estra had a slow lap. I mean, in relative terms, uh, 29.9. I mean, again, almost It was his outlap, seconds. I suppose. Mm -hmm. I think it was his outlap, so he okay. would have lost time coming out of the pits there. But I was expecting him to be uh, a little bit closer. So no one coming into the pits this time around. There's Marco Asma in the 71 Russian GT car that he's sharing with uh, Alexei Vasiliev. And here now is Bernd Schneider flashing his lights as he tries to pass uh, Philippe Salaquada, who's come in and served his pit stop and is running in 18th position. But now Robin Freintz is lurking, looking ready to get and take over. We've also got a battle here uh, between Norbert Siedler, who's just managed to get past Thomas Fjord back. And so Norbert Siedler now is up into 13th position. And that's been a good drive from Siedler, having to make a pit stop end of the first lap. And he's made progress lap quickly all the way through. Yep, so Siedler up into uh, 13th place. Now, will we see Lawrence Van Thor here, our race leader, coming into the pits this time around? It looks as though Robin Freitz is ready to take over as he comes into the final corner now, the Belgian driver. In he comes, the defending Blancpain GT Series champion uh, over, the, over the two and in the endurance champion. So that means that Nicky Katzberg stays out and moves into the lead of the race. The gap was uh, seven seconds at the end of uh, that lap, or the previous lap before Van Thor came in. And now France will take over. Yeah, those, they've come in literally midway through the pit stop window, whereas Nicky Katzberg is going to stay out longer. The possibility being that he will lap and use so much of it, such as the clear air that he has. He was not really in dirty air when he was running in second place, but he can use that opportunity and then when he hands over it to Albert Wonton and Taxis, it puts a little bit less pressure on the, the German uh, co-driver. So we now see what was the lead car go back out. Robin Freins heads up towards Paddock Hill Bend. Also into the pits is Frank Stippler to hands over to uh, James Nash. They were running down outside of the top 10 after a, a, a difficult qualifying session for the number four car. They only could manage 11th place, but it is such a strong field that you're going to have top drivers missing out on the top 10. I mean, the top 10 were covered by other than Van Thor's time, which was really beyond anybody's reach, by about half a second, covering eight or nine cars. Yeah, incredibly close. Also in has come Norbert Siedler then for the second time. Uh, this time he's going to be handing over to Marco Seafried in the triple three Rinaldi uh, Ferrari. The BMW Brazil squad are also in the pits, I can see. Are the right gang? I don't think so. We're going to have Nicky Katzberg out there for one maybe two more laps I think I think he might be able to do two more he, he might be able to do two but I would imagine they'll come in this lap I think just running it really really close to the point where the pit stop window then is closed you just it's a gamble if you, something went wrong say you picked up a, a puncture or you made a little error or you got caught behind traffic that caused you to make a maneuver so I would imagine as we see more of the field filtering through as the bulk of the field really taking the opportunity with three minutes to go before the pit stop window closes. Yes, yeah, so and I would anticipate this lap that Katzberg's on, we will see him in. Now, this is going to be a fascinating pit stop battle because uh, this is the uh, zero BMW, the six Audi and the 70 Mercedes. And when they came into the pits, it was in that order, zero, six and 70, the order in which they are in the pit lane now. So if they go out in this order, then no one's gained or lost anything. But if someone can get a jump, then there may be an overtake, but I think it's going to remain the same. The GT Russian car is having a very, very slow pit stop up at the back. It really doesn't look like uh, 
Alexi Karajev's getting away at all, and that's really lost them a lot of time. Yeah, Ben Schneider just put his hand down to the, the driver's door. I don't know whether he was indicating to tell him to get a move on or whether there was maybe an issue that he wasn't comfortable with. But there is current lead car. Is it coming in this lap? No, you're right, Jacko. Yes. One so more lap. One more lap and for Nicky And he's got Nicky two minutes, which he can do it in very comfortably indeed. So they're taking the maximum opportunity to keep Nicky Katzberg behind the wheel. And uh, then it'll be the opportunity for Albert Wontun and Taxis. <laughs> he, uh, he looks very excited, doesn't he? Into the pits He's now, then. He looks excited. Comes, <laughs> comes Craig Dolby. Now, the question for uh, Dolby is where he comes out, uh, and so is Christopher Meese. So Christopher Meese in as well. So where Dolby comes out uh, with regards to uh, the, Sean the, the, the Brazilian... Uh, yeah, when Sean Morkinshaw comes out with regards to the Brazilian BMWs, that's going to be uh, the real battle. Joe Osborne's in as well. Uh, the Triple Eight guys have got a, a lot of work to do because they're used to British GT Championship racing, um, where you have a minimum pit stop time rather than going as quickly as possible. So out goes Enzo Ede. He's going to emerge, uh, in theory, in third position when everyone when it all shakes out away goes Dolby and uh, with Walkinshaw at the wheel is he going to be in front of the Brazilian BMWs or just behind he might be able to get past one here as they come down towards the right hander no not quite so he comes out uh, behind the 77 and the zero car so that's positions lost for the Nissan at the uh, during the pit stop window they came in uh, ahead of the Brazilians and they've come out behind yeah that was disappointing and because the number three ID also came in just ahead of Craig Dolby. They had a really quick turnaround, got Enzo Eid out. And I don't know what caused uh, the driver change and uh, wheel change on the Nissan, but um, a position lost for the Nissan down to fifth place effectively once the whole pit stop window washes out. So I think it might be two positions lost because both of the Brazilian BMWs have got past. So in now comes Nick Katzberg to hand over to Albert Von Turn and Taxis. It shouldn't, I don't think it'll be too much of a battle for the lead because it was a seven second advantage when uh, Lawrence Van Thor pitted to hand over to Robin Freitz. Freitz is getting held up a little bit by the McLaren in front. And oh, that's going to be a bit of a tight exit there and they just about get away with it. There goes Freitz through to retake the lead of the race. And uh, in second place now should be Albert von Turn and Taxis as he makes his way out of the pit lane. It's going to be pretty close, though, because uh, Enzo Ede is on his way down. Uh, look to the right-hand side there. That is Enzo Ede, the car in third position. So I mean, it would that's, take, that's closed uh, in, Well, that it would take an inspired lap from Enzo Ede to both catch and then overtake Albert von Turn and Taxis. I mean, he, you can see just... The, the gap almost as half for the time it took to get through Paddock Hill Bend for Von Turn and Taxis on his out lap where Enzo Ede has already done a flying lap so he is going to be a little bit more comfortable the tyre temperature will be up at operating temperature whereas for Von Turn and Taxis is fresh tyres no tyre warmers it's a matter of getting a feel for the car but doing it with a slight amount of pressure behind. So there's our race leader, Robin Freitz. He's now got a 10.8 second advantage over the second place. Oh, and there's Forceful attacking from Lee Mole, and he and Alexei Vasiliev end up in the gravel trap. A real shame for the pair of them. Looks as though Vasiliev is out of the race, and uh, it was Lee Mole on the attack into Druids, and that's Vasiliev's race over, I think. Yeah, I mean, we have to look at it. We just caught the end of it where the BMW and the Mercedes came into contact. Let's have a view looking back. So it's the Mercedes who's ahead. BMW comes up the inside, and uh, well, that was a bit. He was sort quite self-induced, I would say. It was a, bit, a little bit aggressive and trying to close the door. The BMW was there legitimately. They hadn't even reached the corner, and uh, he was trying to squeeze the BMW, and the contact inevitably occurred. And I would imagine there'll not be any action taken against uh, Lee Mole for that particular incident. So. Uh, 23 minutes to go in the race here at Brands Hatch. Robin Freitz leading the way, 12 seconds clear of the battle for second place between Albert von Turn and Taxis and Enzo Ede. And uh, this is uh, a battle further back. This is Stefan Raquelmi trying to make his way past Lee Mole now uh, to try and gain 11th position, I think, uh, Lee Mole's in as they come into the final corner. And they're, they're up with the 83 Bentley of uh, Olivier Lombard. Keep an eye on Raquel. He's trying to line up the ID, thinking about a look. He's not going to do it into Padical Bend. His best chance again is going to be into Druids, where we saw one lap ago with the Mercedes and the BMW get into a battle for track position. The BMW came off the better of the two. 
Stefan Rakelny not capable of doing anything this time. Probably might be able to lap overall quicker than Lee Mole in the BMW. Again, not into Graham Hill Bend. The next opportunity comes into Surtees. Pretty easily defended to prevent an attack. Going down the inside, he's looking down the inside. He breaks late, gets the position, but can he maintain it? He's so oh, well, just the BMW. Just, just managed to keep the momentum around the outside of Surtees. But now, overall straight line pace. The Audi's going to be marginally ahead. It's going to be interesting. Who comes out of? Well, Hawthorne is going to be clearly Stefan Rakelny, but he runs wide. He didn't really get an apex, but no chance for Lee Mould to come back. Yeah, uh, good work there from Rakelny, the Triple Eight BMW squad watching on in the pits. But of course, it's not a uh, not that fair a fight because uh, the BMW is running in the Pro Am class. Lee Mould, the the Am, whereas Stefan Rakelny has won. GP2 races at Monaco, so that's the sort of uh, difference uh, of, of experience that we're talking. And uh, Rakelmi now up into 12th position, so Freint still leading the way. Uh, Albert von Turn and Taxis there in the 88, right of Lamborghini is second, but not by much because he's got Enzo Eid closing in on him. And uh, we can hear now from Nicky Katzberg, Bruce Jones has found him. Is he going to be able to hold off the attack from Enzo Eid? Nick Katzberg, a brilliant first stint from you, but the big question is, can Albert hold off the charging Enzo Eid behind him? Will we have Lamborghini finish second? Yeah, I think Albert can. He's doing a great job so far this weekend, and I'm sure he will stay in front of Eden. Well, we'll see. Thanks. Good job. Yeah, the trouble is that uh, Von and Taxi's first flying lap was basically two seconds slower than the lead Audi, but more importantly, one and a bit seconds slower than the charging Enzo Eid. So, he is going to be under pressure. Uh, whether Enzo Eid can maintain that pace, having had the advantage of doing the slightly earlier pit stop and getting up to speed that one or two laps beforehand. So let's go and see if Von Tunen Tax is still a 127.2 against a 126.9. So three tenths of a second advantage to Enzo Eid. It's beginning to settle down. Maybe Nicky Katzberg's optimism is going to be justified. I think they'd have been disappointed if Bruce had asked that question and he'd have said no, no, no chance. But uh, the quickest, uh, now Raquel has got past Lee Mole. He's just set the fastest first sector of anyone in the race so far. So Raquel certainly has uh, the pace out there. Uh, no further action between the incident of uh, Lee Mole and uh, the 71 car of Alexi Vasilia. No, I mean, it, when you saw it again in review, we got the head-on shot and the BMW was legitimately on the inside and was being pinched way, way too early before they even got to the corner. And it was a self-induced penalty for, for the Mercedes. Uh, regrettably seeing another car out, but that's the penalty you have to accept. Into the right-hander. And dropping down through Dingle Dell, up towards Sheen. The battle over second position is the one we're watching. Albert von Turn and Taxis is in second place. Enzo Eid is in third position in that uh, number two, black and yellow, WRT Audi. 19 minutes remaining here at Brands Hatch. This is just to set the grid for the main race that's coming up later on. As they swing into the right-hander and head out onto the straight again. Vincent Voss, the uh, man who runs that WRT operation, hoping that he can uh, see his cars get a 1-2 because Freitz and Van Thor leading the way at the moment up at the front, as they did here, um, as they have done here before, but they were so good at winning on... Uh, the qualifying races last year but only managed to win one main race and that's why they never ended up challenging for the title that was Van Thor and Ramos back then yeah. now it's Van Thor and Fries it could be a different story but this is close yeah this is close and you saw Van Sanvoss's face he wants to have his two cars in the front row of the grid for no other reason you lock out track position overtaking at Brands is not the easiest of racetracks we've seen some outstanding overtaking maneuvers that takes a little bit of thought a little bit of where am I on the racetrack and where can I use my car strengths? But other racetracks make it easier than they do at Brands. Looking to see the long way around the outside going into Sterling's and the cut and back is, up the inside. Yeah, this is the battle over seventh position. Kevin Estra in that white McLaren on the right-hand side trying to get past Nicky Mayer Melnoff. He's up alongside on the run down the... Uh, straight towards Hawthorne. Mayor Melnoff will hold it on the inside line. Estra will go around the outside at Hawthorne. Great move from the Frenchman. Yeah, particularly doing it on Nicky Mayer Melnoff because you're <laughs> never really sure. I mean, as great a driver as Nicky Mayer Melnoff is, occasionally he has his hissy fits. 
And that in Hawthorne is not a place you'd like one of those uh, fizzy fits to occur. Absolutely not. 17 and I hope he doesn't watch these races back. He loves it, he loves it. <laughs> 17 and a half minutes to go. And uh, look at that, an 18 second lead now. Robin Fryance is flying out there, uh, lapping. Uh, well, about a second, 1.3 seconds of that quicker than the battle for second place, which is Von Turn and Taxis and Enzo Ede. And look at that, now Kevin Estra's got through into seventh. He's starting to romp clear, but he is eight seconds down the road from Walkinshaw. Here's a look at the replay of where it all... Well, I mean... Nicky did this last year. Yeah, he yeah, ran I mean, wide Nicky, and lost That's what I'm position. saying about Nicky. You're never really sure whether he comes to a corner, what you're going to get. Kevin Estra saw that. He put himself into a position. Mayor Melnhoff went to defend up the inside, gave Astra the opportunity to come around the long way, and there we see that's one lap later. The gap bottomed just over a second, and uh, Olivier Lombard pushing hard to try and make up some ground currently in 11th place. And the Mercedes very much a challenge. And we've got Alexei Karachev behind the wheel. Yep. Swinging to the left hander, and look how quickly the Bentley has been catching the Mercedes as we go back to see Sean Walking short. Uh, starting to close in, is he on the Brazilian BMWs in front? He's only six tenths of a second behind Caca Bueno, and on that last lap was uh, three tenths of a second quicker. Can we go well, on board. I mean, the, the, the Nissan's got a load of squirt out of all these sort of second, third gear corners, a lot of torque to really get the car momentum up to speed. Uh, so he's got to look and see whether there's opportunities to at least get to split the two. BMW Sports Trophy Team Brazil cars. It's great to see the Nissan running well because we did have a Nissan in the Sprint Series a couple of years ago run by the RJN team, part of the GT Academy squad, and they said that the Sprint tracks didn't really suit them. On the big, uh, you know, Monzas and Silverstones, they were absolutely on it, but the tight, twisty circuits like Nagaro, they said they just couldn't get the power down. But the, the, this Nissan team, uh, run by MRS Racing, they were very quick at Nagaro, very quick here too. Yeah, I mean, it is a quick car. I mean, there's obviously development and uh, engineering in general within the rules and regulations enables cars to improve. And, uh, oh, Jimenez is yeah, enjoying it. I was just it. going to say, Jimenez <laughs> is having a lovely afternoon in the sun. Well, not quite afternoon yet. In another seven minutes. OK, well, well we look forward to that. No, uh, a little driving a sniff down the inside, just showing the nose of the Nissan, showing the intent. And uh, he's got the pace to get ahead. Of the first of the BMW. It was Craig Dolby, he's happy with his morning's work. A very busy morning for Craig Dolby because I think he's racing in the GT Cup as well. He's already had a qualifying session this morning, a race here, and then he's got two more races to do this afternoon. He's got a massive mortgage, even in spite of all the results on Thursday, massive mortgage to pay off. <laughs> so to, to, to the clear ways they come, and uh, it's lights ablaze for Sean Walking Short who's a team owner as well, runs Sean Walkinshaw Racing, which competes in uh, other championships, including the BRDC Formula 4 Championship. As they come down into Paddock Hill Bend once again, and uh, after the race, we'll definitely have to go and see uh, what happened to them when they lost that four seconds in the first stint, because if that hadn't happened, I mean, I know it's all ifs and buts, but they'd be in the battle for second right now with uh, with the sort of pace they're showing. And in fact, these three are all closing in yeah. on second position at a rate of about, well, almost a second a lap. And again, just going back to this battle for second pace, Von Turn and Texas running now at a comparable pace, whether he's delaying Enzo Eid or not, but the battle is for that second place. And Enzo Eid, who's caught up relatively quickly, can't translate that into a pass and take second place away from Von Turnen, Texas. On board we go, into Hawthorne's again. And oh, he's got past, so sorry, he's got past the BMW Team Brazil car, and uh, he is up into fifth position. Good move, I presume, from Walkinshaw, I missed it. Yeah, we, well, we didn't see it on camera, the Bentley has stopped, and is that coming out of Graham Hill Bend? It is, has spun coming out of Graham Hill Bend, getting mm -hmm. back underway, Olivier Lombard, who was really hustling the Bentley Continental along, and now yeah. Walkinshaw's Under got pressure. to defend, yeah. he's got through into fifth position, but he's got Caca Bueno, uh, very frustrated now that he lost that place behind him, and Walkinshaw will try and sprint clear, and try and close in on uh, Attila Abru, who's running in fourth position at the moment, across the line they come, 13 minutes to go, and they are now just two and a half seconds behind the battle for second place as well, so it's all starting to close in here at Brands Hatch, 13 minutes to go. This is the qualifying race ahead of the main race that's coming up later on this afternoon. I think the thing that Sean Walkinshaw did was it when he caught the BMW, he got a pass. He didn't sort of get caught or trapped behind, and therefore the momentum that had carried him up 
to the tail of the first of the two coaches, was able to carry it forward. We can now hear from Craig Dolby, uh, the man who ran the opening stint, and his teammate is really making progress. Craig Dolby, I don't want to drag you away from the screen. Sean Walkinshaw doing a great job, just gained another position. Yeah, he's flying at the minute, so uh, he's making, uh, doing us proud, really. Um, just hope he doesn't have the, the same gearbox issue as I had. It went into neutral, so uh, fingers crossed we can get it home. Did you hear what he said? Well, let's hope that Sean doesn't have that. Best of luck. Good run there. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Well, there's our question answered. Yeah, it is. We thought it might have been a driver mistake, but it was simply a box for the neutrals, and, of course, you've got to then quickly react and lots of stuff on board the car to reset and then get the gearbox functioning fully. I mean, it's electronics principally and servos and ultimately a mechanical gear change. So, here down, coming towards Paddock Hill Bend is the battle for uh, fourth place. Attila Brew now only has a four-tenth of a second advantage. Walkinshaw has rocketed up to the back of that BMW and look, the battle for second is just up in front. Oh, this is going to be why Olivier Lombard spun. This is he was going an to get assist. A, I bet you it was a, an assist. A bit of a bonjour from Raquel Me. Oh. Yeah, that may get the attention yeah. of the stir because, again, that was no way it was the pass possible and it just banged into the right rear corner, left rear corner of the Bentley and Olivier Lombard was in no position to do much about it. So Raquel Ney may well have blotted what was actually a very impressive run, uh, but that's slightly spoiling it. Yep, he'd seen Ortelli do it and thought, I'll have a go at that as well. You can see he took a second out of Attila Abreu on that last lap walk in shore as they come up towards Hawthorns. The big MRS GT Nissan tucked a ride in behind. Just getting a message, pit stop for car number two. That's the Enzo Eid car currently running in third place. It's under investigation. I remember watching the car. It came in, it left the pits. It was a very short pit stop, much quicker than any of the others I think I've seen so far. So that's under investigation. But back to this battle, which is in fourth and fifth place. So Sean Walkinshaw with, what, just over 10 minutes remaining. So there's second, third, fourth, fifth and sixth, all coming under the bridge down towards clearways, all pretty much in sort of reverse speed order with 10 minutes to go. So our attention right now on this battle for fourth place, Craig Dolby. Robin Freitz up at the yep. front meanwhile has a 23 second lead well, over this second place battle. He, sorry, he's just fulfilling the, uh, the potential that WRT knew that he had. Did blot his copybook in Nagaro, but that's all in the past. There's Frank Stippler and Stefano Telli are watching their respective teammates. And that's the battle's third, fourth, fifth, sixth. Yeah, great to have such close action here on the Brands Grand Prix circuit. Through Surtees they come, and this is where the Nissan is strong compared to the... Oh, he got... Did he get sideways coming out of well, there? He, 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 he spun the wheels up coming off the kerb. So the car lost that little bit of momentum. But again, you can see once it gets underway, there's an enormous amount of grunt from that V6 twin turbo engine. And now here is the attack for 10th position. Stefan Raquelmi trying to uh, pick up 10th uh, spot. No points for 10th position. It's only the top eight that will score in this qualifying race. But you want to get as high up the grid as possible, considering they started in 16th on the grid. Uh, to get up to 10th would put them in reasonable contention for the main race later yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole purpose of what Stefan Raquelmi is doing, is to maximise the best possible finish to get the best possible start for the main race later and grid position at Brands Hatch is a problem. Drive through penalty for the second place car. Albert von Turnen Taxis has been given a drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane, whether that was pit in or pit out, uh, uncertain, but it's a drive through penalty for the 88 Reiter Engineering Lamborghini and that'll be a real frustration for them because they're running in what is a reasonably comfortable second position, two seconds clear of Enzo Eid. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the second place battle had consolidated and all of a sudden, that maverick pit step penalty or the drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane has just overturned all the good work done by Mickey Katzberg and by Von Turnen Taxis. But you, the speed limits are there for a purpose, and if you don't adhere to them, you will be penalised. This battle currently, again, which is going to be now the battle for third place, a podium position now, either to the BMW or to the Nissan. Absolutely, and uh, ultimately they haven't got uh, too far up the road, but before they get to Enzo Eid, possibly in the battle over second place, with a shake of the head from Hans Reiter. And, well, 
It'll be a brave man to go and ask him about it. Maybe Bruce is up to the task. We'll, we'll find out. But seven and a half minutes to go. And that second place 88 car, Albert Von Turn and Taxis, is going to have to serve a drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane. And very, very wide there for Kaka Bueno. Uh, sorry, Attila Abreu yeah. in the third place uh, BMW. Yeah, he, he ran it very wide in the exit of Sheen Curve. You can catch the grass verge. And that uh, is just, he did that, but not enough to cause him any particular problems but that's the kind of pressure he's having to react to so into the pits comes the 88 Lamborghini of Albert von Turnen taxes to serve his drive through penalty and he drives through at a very very slow speed like he should have done the first time well we don't know whether it was him or Nicky <laughs> no, Katzberg know, as you pointed out we assumed it was Albert von Turnen taxes but we don't know the uh, car has been penalised it's the driver that suffers the penalty yeah it could have just been too late getting down to the speed limit that tends to be where the speeding occurs rather than going too quickly uh, on the way out of the pits but that has dropped him down to I think 8th position now uh, so still not a not a not a terrible position to be in, but this is now the second place car, the number two WRT Audi of Enzo E's, but he's got Attila Abreu and the Nissan, and the Nissan is so strong down Pilgrim's Drop. That's where uh, the advantage is in that Nissan is its straight line speed. We go on board with Sean Walkinshaw in the MRS GT Nissan, running in fourth place now, looking to get onto the podium for the first time in their block pan uh, career up through the right hander of Sheen now into the left hander the, the camber downhill left hander at Sterling's and out once again towards the start finish straight and Kevin Estra's coming is that Ke yeah Kevin yeah, Estra's is. coming to join the party I mean, he's driving the wheels off the McLaren yeah. and literally running every bit of the racetrack and the kerb I mean, what an exciting driver Kevin Estra is in a GT car with it's a Porsche last weekend in Belgium here Brands Hatch in a McLaren one of the factory McLaren uh, drivers and just pushing every second he's behind the wheel yeah absolutely so he's managed to get up into sixth place that 55 car started in ninth but uh, in the hands of rob bell got a bit bogged down in the uh, traffic in the early stages in the early battles but now it is very much a four-way car a foot five-way train for the second place spot this is robin frights just being very conservative when he's coming up to lap lee mole this is the man leading the race in the number one wrt audi with a 27 second advantage over that second place squabble and uh, you can understand why he was just being a, a little cautious when lapping you know, some of the back markers down pilgrims drop look how quick that nissan is coming into yeah, Hawthorne's. I mean, it's picking up speed all the way down into hawthorne's bend so he's just he needs to keep that close contact but of course He's having to be dictated to by a little in the BMW. It's the pace of the BMW that's determining the pace of the Nissan. And that's really preventing Walkinshaw from getting that attack. He was able to pass the first of the two BMWs because he had momentum. He's not got the same momentum. Yeah, I think he's going to need uh, a good run out of Surtees, maybe a mistake into Surtees from Attila Abreu. Kevin but Estra's dancing right on, around. Absolutely. Kevin Estra's the man that could really be, with four and a half minutes of this race remaining, the one that, that could pick up certainly one position. Um, assuming he can get again to do. Just coming up into Paddockle Bend, as you see the Nissan and BMW, the gap sort of being seesawing between half and three quarters of a second. Now it's yeah, closer, consistently closer yeah. on that last lap at the start of this lap than we've seen at any point. BMW quicker, maybe better traction out of Druid, but the Nissan has certainly got the squirt on the straight line, runs a little bit wide coming out of Graham Hill Bend. This could be a good opportunity for Walkinshaw because he was just three tenths of a second behind at the line. If he can get a good drive coming out of the left-hander at Surtees, the move could be on for third place. He's tucked right up behind the BMW as they come through Pilgrim's Drop now. He goes a little bit more narrow into the corner. Is he going to be close enough to look to the inside of Hawthorne's? A little cover to the inside, not quite close enough. And this battle is going to run and run in the remaining three and a half minutes. John has just left to make the long trek from the commentary box down to the Parc Ferme to interview certainly Robin Freitz and... Lawrence Van Thor, but who else is going to be on the podium because we've got this fantastic five car fight second third fourth fifth sixth all flashing through two BMWs a Nissan and a McLaren 650s with three minutes to go through Clark curve Enzo Eid in that second spot has managed to hold on 
for the time being reasonably comfortably. Again, Walkinshaw is just three tens behind. And Craig Dolby there is desperate to pick up a podium. Former Super League Formula race winner, Craig Dolby. As they come up into the hairpin at Druids, look how close he is. Now dropping down the hill into the left-hander at Graham Hill Bend. Again, he's, he seems to go in earlier to the, to the apexes than uh, the car in front. Kevin Estra, meanwhile, in the McLaren is looking very strong. Now watch these two cars coming through here. Absolutely nose to tail. 77 is the Brazilian Attila Abreu. Right behind him in the big white Nissan is walking short. Is he going to be close enough? Coming up towards Hawthorne. Looks to the outside line. Outside at Hawthorne's a brave one. Looks for it. Can't quite get it done. We'll try and get the cut back, but that could compromise him because Caca Bueno is not too far behind in the zero BMW. But that's the sort of attack that Walkinshaw has got to try and pull but he couldn't get it done that time around and it's the inside line really into such a quick right-hander that you need <laughs> Craig Dolby can't bear it can he incredible he's right backing out of the garage as they come down towards the final corner at Clearways once more a minute and a half left on the clock uh, Robin Freitz has been through to start his 41st lap of the race so I think Freitz has just started his penultimate lap of the race I think so we are now on the penultimate lap of the race. A minute and a half to go here at Brands Hatch. A fantastic five-way fight for second position. Looks as though Enzo Ede might just about have it covered for that second place spot. But the battle for the final podium position is kicking off. So is the battle for fifth place. Kevin Estra desperate to find a way through. He's in the Attempto Racing uh, white McLaren 650S. On board with Walkinshaw again. Further back this time across the line. He was three tenths of a second further back from Attila Abreu as the previous tour. He's got a reasonably good run through 30s. And just look at the Nissan close in. Abreu knows it and he has to cover the inside line. Here comes the attack again from Walkinshaw. But he's not going to be close enough and it's not possible to go all the way around the outside really at Hawthorne. Walkinshaw and Dolby don't actually have that much experience here at Brands Hatch. Uh, Dolby's raced here three times, Walkinshaw twice, as the race leader has now just started his final lap. So these guys are still on their penultimate lap. One more to go after this. Down into clearways. That's Enzo Ede in second place. Third is Attila Abreu, fourth is Sean Walkinshaw and fifth is Kaka Bueno and sixth is Kevin Estra as they come across the line now. The clock counts down to zero and they start the final tour of this Brands Hatch circuit in what has been a very entertaining qualifying race. The main race still to come later on today. And look how close Kevin Estra is to the back of Kaka Bueno on the run up the hill towards Druids. Is he going to be close enough to make a manoeuvre? Not quite yet. And is that the last opportunity for Estra potentially? Runs a little bit wide and also Walkinshaw is not really as close and he's run quite wide coming out of uh, Graham Hill Bend. It doesn't look as though Walsh Walkinshaw is going to be quite close enough in that MRS GT Nissan. But here is our race leader, Robin Freitz, coming down through Sterling's, the left-hander now. A man with uh, an incredible single-seater record really burst onto the scene a few years ago consecutive championships in the Formula Renault series but now he and Laurence Vanthor are going to take victory in the qualifying race at Brands Hatch their first win of the season in Blancpain Sprint who's going to be second across the line though that's the big question it should be Enzo Ede and Christopher Meese coming out down towards Clearways for the final time. Enzo's going to have to go defensive surely because he's got the BMW right behind him. Not quite close enough through the right-hander at Clearways. Enzo Ede and Christopher Meese are going to make it a 1-2 for Team WRT. They'll have a front row lockout for the main race just in front of Attila Abreu. Then Craig Walkinshaw finishing in fourth position. Fifth place for Caca Bueno. Kevin Estra couldn't quite get it done for sixth. There's Nicky Mayer Melnoff across the line for Phoenix Audi in seventh position. But third down to sixth were covered by 1.3 seconds. There's Albert Von Turn and Taxis. They could have been in second place. But for a drive through penalty for speeding in the pit lane. But delight for Team WRT. A 1 2. Their first 1 2 of the season so far. And uh, 
Lawrence Van Thor and Robin Frights taking the victory in the qualifying race. That'll give them pole for the main race later on today. Still a few battles to come across the line. Marco Seyfried did a great job to get up into 10th position there in the triple three Ferrari after they had to make uh, more, two pit stops for a puncture in the opening lap suffered by Norbert Seidler. But hopefully the pretty big crowd that's come here at Brands Hatch have uh, enjoyed it. There is Frights. He and Laurence Van Thor taking a commanding victory. 26 and a half seconds clear of the rest of the pack. Hugely impressive stuff. Frights climbs out of the car. He's used to... Oh, and that is uh, Alexei Karachev. Now, has he rotated there? Or... I'm not quite sure what's happened there to, to Karachev. But there is Robin Frights. Delighted with his first victory in Blancpain, his first victory in GTs. They couldn't compete in the opening race in Nagaro because Frights crashed into the pit wall and um, that meant that the car was a write-off for the weekend. So that was his first GT race and he's won it. And the 70 car of Karachev just came to a stop. He didn't spin or crash, he's just uh, pulled up to a stop. But there is Robin Frights, our race winner Superb performance from the Dutch racer, and he's now talking to Bruce Jones. Robin Frains, congratulations. You said before the start of the race you'd only done 10 laps of Brands Hatch. Looks like you've known it all your life. Well, I have to learn a lot from this boy here. He's quick, but car's good. Team did a good job during the tight weekend, and uh, finally we had a deserved win. Lawrence Van Thor, you put the car on pole, a dominating run. Got a good start, just again dominated. What do you have to do, or what does anybody else have to do to get ahead of you guys? No idea. Uh, I think we're just a good team. We work well, uh, so we we do our work the best we can, and uh, that's what we we get on track. So, Robin, pole position for the start of the main race. Any thoughts about thinking forward a couple of hours? Uh, no, I just see what happens. I don't, I'm not allowed, don't think to think forward. You know, uh, start is everything different. Always, now they're always the same, so just see what happens in the first corner is the most important thing. Enjoy it, thank you. Thank you. So great to hear from our race winners. Speaking, of course, of John Watson, uh, not Bruce Jones. Um, totally forgot he'd been up with me for most of the race. But uh, yeah, they, they chat to Watty down there and a great performance from them. Uh, second place for Enzo Eid and uh, Christopher Meese strong performance for the WRT team a 1-2 for them very impressive stuff and uh, hopefully we'll be we'll be hearing from the the second place guys in a few moments time well here we go Christopher Mees and Enzo Eid are down speaking to John Watson it is John Watson this time Christopher Mees that's a good morning's work isn't it yeah so far so good uh, qualifying race we finished second uh, it's a good start for the championship race um, but the main points are in the race later on so um, yeah we'll push harder there uh, car wasn't as good as in qualifying um, but I'm sure the boys will find it and uh, we'll sort it out Enzo you're charging all the way under pressure but at the end the Lamborghini was penalized so it made it a lot easier but a great drive nonetheless yeah thank you um yeah it's a true it's true uh, the, the cars behind me catched up quite quite quick but i was also with the Lamborghini in the fight and uh, in the end okay i managed to stay in front and like Christopher said nothing happened yet it's only the qualifying race it uh, will be this afternoon the most important but isn't it nice to be starting at the front see no one alongside other than your own teammate alongside yeah it's uh, of course a great experience and a great feeling if you start in front with nobody else uh, in front of you so i will take the start i will let you know how it feels after the main race well send us a letter we'll catch up later on many thanks Thank you. enzo Eid there uh, chatting to john and he doesn't seem totally enthused about starting on the front row of the grid bruce jones has joined me in the commentary box now and uh, a great result for, for wrt a, re a really good result i mean <laughs> They had the trip up at uh, Nagara where we lost the number one car before we went out to play. Uh, and they've totally delivered. But <laughs> I thought Enzo Eid's face was very funny there. I think he's realised <laughs> the enormity of where he's starting for the uh, feature race after we've all had a slap up lunch. <laughs> and uh, really interesting race. But as we've seen at Brands Hatch, you can get close, but it's so hard to take an overtaking manoeuvre. 
Yeah, we can now hear from our third place men, Valdeno, Brito and Attila Abreu. Attila, it's nice to see you Brazilian boys smiling. Yes, I mean, my first race as a, a seasoner, uh, so I'm really happy. Uh, first time that me and Valdeno, we drive together. So we had some problems in the first practice yesterday, but we are able to improve. The mechanics did a, a really good job. They changed the, uh, the gears and everything, so everything works. Uh, I really don't know the pace for this car. I need to understand it's just my first time. But anyway, finished third. It's really good. Now I, I think we can improve, work a little bit more, and maybe dream with another podium for the second race. Let's work. Hey, Valdeno, second row of the grid, but you got that Nissan alongside of you and it was splitting your two team cars. It's got a lot of pace. Yes, Nissan is very fast, uh, the straight. But uh, the, first I want to say that I'm very happy about this point because last year I was penalized. There was some problem I had with pit stop. I was very sad about that. I was in second place, but today it was another day, third position, first race in the sprint series with, uh, with Atla Breu, a very fast guy, and uh, he did a very good battle about Nissan. So I'm very happy. Fix the team. He, they did a very good pit stop again. Uh, I hope they win the pit stop too. And I think it's his birthday. Is it your birthday today? Yes, yes it is my birthday. <laughs> okay. Happy birthday. First time that I drive in this, the day of my birthday. I'm 28 years now, but I'm really happy. Thank you, Tim. I thought you'd be 21 and you'd never been kissed. No, 21 was a long time ago. Now 28, get a little bit older, the beard starts to get a little bit white, but you still have a lot of time to drive and to race. Well, happy birthday, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, what he's not the person to complain to about uh, feeling old. There's uh, a great performance from Valdeno Brito and uh, Attila Abreu. They really had to defend towards the uh, end of the race there. I hope, I hope what he didn't hear that. Um, yeah, they really had to defend towards the end of the race there. Didn't they just? But I, I think the scariest moments of all must have been Attila thinking that John was going to give him a kiss there down <laughs> in, in Park Ferme. But... Um, Again, through the course, as we had all those cars in that battle for second place, just looking at their different areas of performance advantage around the circuit, and there's one place you just don't want to be trying to overtake around the outside, and that's Hawthorne's. Sean Walkinshaw gave it a couple of goes, and I actually thought he might lose the position as he had to come off the power just that little bit, and, and but he didn't. Here's a look at the results after 42 laps and one hour of racing at Brands Hatch. A 26 and a half second winning margin for Robin France and Lawrence Van Thor. Incredible performance from them ahead of their WRT teammates Enzo Eid and Christopher Meese. But that fantastic battle from second down to sixth place is going to resume instantly when the qualifying race gets under, uh, when the main race gets underway, because it'll be the drivers who finished that race starting the main race. So uh, Walkinshaw in fourth, Kevin Estra doing a good job to climb up into sixth position, eighth place for Albert von Turnen Taxis and Nicky Katzberg having run second in the early stages. Uh, 13th position for the 83 Bentley that got punted around a couple of times. Alexei Karachev coming to a stop on the final lap in the Team uh, Russia um, Mercedes. Lee Mole and Joe Osborne slipped back after a strong start and uh, Alexei Vasiliev and Marco Asma were forced out of the race after contact with the 888 BMW. And just looking down that, that list, Jack, I think you have to pick out 10th place there because 10th um, place went to the Ferrari it came in for a pit stop extra pit stop so yeah. good drive for the Ferrari team yes absolutely Marco Seafried uh, recovered that uh, very nicely so uh, the podium presentations are going to be getting underway in a couple of moments time and out onto the podium come the race winners Robin Freitz and Laurence Van Thorpe onto the top step for the first time this year. Van Thor was on the top step in the qualifying race many times last season, but couldn't get it done when it mattered in the main race. And he'll be hoping that that will change for this year. And he's got his first chance to do it later on today. A 1-2 for WRT. Enzo Eid and Christopher Meese there in second. And then Attila Abreu and Valdeno Brito in third place. A shake of the hands with everyone as I think that's Pierre Dudonne comes out onto the podium. And now it's time for the Belgian national anthem.
Top step of the podium for Laurence Van Thor and Robin Fryant. His first GT race and his first GT victory. Not a bad record. Uh, one from one. Well, it's really one from two, as we know. He had that slight off that turned out to be a big off at Nagaro, but uh, job done beautifully delivered here at Brands Hatch. Yep. And uh, the trophies are about to be handed out. Third place men, Valdena Brito and Attila Abru, the first uh, podium for those two in Blancpain. It was here a year ago that Caca Bueno and Sergio Jimenez picked up their first podiums in Blancpain. Christopher Meese and Enzo Eid collecting their trophies. A second place performance, but uh, I think Enzo's mind is already on that front row start for the, for the main race later on. And now the winning trophies for Lawrence Van Thor and Robin Freitz. Victory in the qualifying race. A couple of points for them, but more importantly, pole position for the main race later on and a chance to get their championship not even back on track, just on track after not picking up any points at all in the opening race of the season. Pierre Dudonne uh, receiving the trophy there for the winning team WRT. A 1-2 from them and again uh, an incredibly impressive performance from WRT. They, they really know what they're doing and third place for the Brazilian BMW guys but I'd be, I think Fries and Van Thor look good for race two but from second downwards, Bruce, I think it's anybody's. It's anybody's guess. In any race at Brands Hatch, it's anybody's guess with Paddock Hill as the first corner yeah. on the circuit, followed by obviously the dip and then the run up to Druids. But that winning margin, 26 seconds. I mean, if they come here and, ex and take a victory, would be entirely unexpected. Very strong lineup, but by 26 seconds, that's set the cat among the pigeons. But no points at all from Nagaro. But that's a potential haul of 33 points out of the window. So they're going to have to start scoring maximum at all the rounds through the rest of the season. Yes, absolutely. They're, they're main, and of course, some of their main contenders uh, eliminated in the shape of uh, Maximilian Buch and uh, Vance on Abril not taking part after a crash uh, yesterday for them. Then you have the likes of Raquel and Ortelli who are effectively leading the championship because of uh, Dirk Muller and um, Maxime Martin just doing a one-off appearance in Nagaro. So the three car of Raquel Mee and Ortelli, essentially the championship leaders, but they could only manage 11th place. So they're going to be starting a long way down in the field as well. So they're in the box seats to, to take the to take the challenge to the rest of the field. Absolutely. And again, we, we talked about a few drivers picking their way up from problems in the field, but it is so hard to pass here. You have to be ultra 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 committed to make a, an overtaking maneuver stick at least a fabulous racing but um very very tight but that advantage uh, that Freens and Van Tor gained in the first race is it, it's not just the fact they've got eight points for victory and the next lineup have got six it's the fact that they delivered such a hammer blow to everyone else yeah, absolutely we're about to have our uh, silver cup winners take to the podium in a couple of moments time but here's a look at the classification after that first race of the weekends here at Brands Hatch. Maxi Martin and Dirk Muller after their one-off appearance at Nagaro at the top of the standings. Ortelli and Raquel Mee on 27 points in second place. And uh, Robin Freitz and Lawrence Van Thor now poking their way into uh, the top nine. And there are the Silver Cup winners, Olivier Lombard and uh, Jules Simkoviak. Despite getting assaulted a couple of times during the race, they managed to get through to take the victory and there is the Pro-Am winner Bernd Schneider on the left hand side Alexei Karachev on the right hand side and there's the uh, winning representative from the HTP uh, Bentley squad heading out there as well and they're not quite sure what happened to Karachev because he just came to a standstill on the he last couldn't get, lap. Yeah and in fact at his pit stop he couldn't get it going and uh, Bernd Schneider oh, yeah, went running true. around was sort of looking through the window to see what was happening and then it ground away. So the German national anthem for HTP. So the German national anthem for the winning team, HTP, running the Bentleys, but only one Bentley out this weekend. And it took victory, at least, I suppose, but uh, a real shame for Max Buch uh, and Vance on Abril. Vance on Abril, who, of course, was in Silver Cup last year with the WRT Audi squad. So that shows the sort of step up that uh, you can make. And they are on the top step 
as far as the Silver Cup are concerned. Pro-Am victory going the way then of uh, Bernd Schneider and Alexei uh, Karachev. But it was Joe Osborne, really, who was leading the way in that. But uh, Lee Mole having a bit of contact up at Druids. And I wonder if that maybe sort of knocked him out of his rhythm or damaged the car, potentially, because it was a fairly hefty hit with the 71 Merc. It's a big thing to hit as well. <laughs> <laughs> big lump of Mercedes. But uh, anyhow, if you put Bernd Schneider in a car, you do expect a trophy. And that's what's happened yes, exactly. yet again. His first time on the Grand Prix circuit here at Brands Hatch. Know, astonishing, isn't it? unbelievable, but there it is. And so, victory in the Silver Cup for the HTP squad and the uh, GT Russia team finishing at top in Pro-Am despite not actually managing to get round to take the chequered flag but it was only sort of a quarter of a lap so we'll let them off with that. Uh, no uh, champagne tends to be uh, sprayed because they've got a race to come up later on as well so they don't want to be stinking when uh, for, the, for the rest of the day but I'm sure after the main race later on this afternoon It'll be a bit more entertaining up there on the podium after victory. Uh, the car manager, the team manager of uh, HTP has been asked to report to the race director immediately. That is the boss of the HTP uh, squad that were just on the top step of the Silver Cup podium. So who knows what's happening there as you see a gaggle of Mazda MX-5s lining up. So let's have a look at the points that we didn't quite manage to finish a few moments ago. Max Martin and Dirk Muller on top, Ortelli and Raquel Me in second place. Robin Freitz and Laurence Van Thor down there in sixth position. They pick up nine points, one point for pole position, eight points for the race win uh, today. So they're not quite in contention yet, but it's still very early stages in the season. Enzo Eden, Christopher Meese, uh, they're in third position after they collected some points in uh, that race today. Marco Seafried and Norbert Seeder, they're still leading the overall uh, Blanc Pan GT Series, including the Endurance, and they're fourth in this at the moment, and they'll be starting tenth on the grid a little bit later on. And I think the fact there, we're looking at uh, Vincent Abril and Maxi Boot, no points at all. They didn't get to start this race. At the top of the charts, Maxi Martin and Dirk Muller, maximum points, or as near as, from Nagaro, didn't take part here today. Yeah, absolutely. As far as the teams are concerned, uh, it's been, uh, well, we'll, we'll uh, bring you the team points when we can get them uh, later on to you, but uh, a great first race here at uh, Brands Hatch, really entertaining stuff, overtaking, not the easiest around the, the Grand Prix circuit, but it's just superb to have the cars out on the Grand Prix circuit. Last year was the first time that International GT Racing had uh, returned to Brands Hatch for uh, quite a while, I think it was some 20 years or something since we last had major international top level GT racing at Brands. It was an entertaining race, let's have a little look back at some of the highlights. So the qualifying race got underway and it was Laurence Van Thor on pole position. Nicky Katzberg stuck with him around the outside of the first two corners, but if you're on the inside line for Paddock and Druids, you've pretty much got the job done. It was a great start from the uh, Nissan of Craig Dolby, but more so from Joe Osborne. He managed to leapfrog both of the Brazilian BMWs in front of him. That was the rear view from the uh, Rinaldi Ferrari that would later end up heading off into the gravel. But from the moment Van Thor managed to hold the lead, he immediately was starting to disappear, Bruce. Yeah, Nicky Katzberg managed to give chase, very bold as he was around the opening few corners, but it was the action all the way down the field. And I think we have a hit that might be coming up on the rear-facing camera on the Ferrari. Oh, and there it is! <laughs> so that that is taking you right into the heart of the action on a brilliant circuit, but the action was so close, except if you were Lawrence Van Tor, it was all getting smaller in his rearview mirror. Yep, yeah, as were those pebbles as they disappeared out of the rear view of uh, Norbert Seidler, who then had to pit. There was uh, an attack from the 83 HTP car, Jules Simkovia, starting that then uh, Stefan Ortelli made a nice move on Marco Bononomi coming down into Graham Hill Bend the two Audis going side by side WRT versus ISR and it was WRT who came out on top pit stop windows came around in came BMW Team Brazil and they did a great job to get themselves out in front of the uh, 73 Nissan there was the second place car leaving the pits but they were then later be given a drive through penalty that was Lee Mole attacking Alexei Vasiliev and uh, Vasiliev was then out of the race and Mole lost a lot of time and he was then passed later on by uh, Stefan Raquelmi down the back straight and into Hawthorne. Sticky Man Melnoff made a bit of a mistake and that allowed Kevin Estra through and from then on Kevin Estra was on a mission. 
he was the hare. He, they're not, he wasn't chasing chasing tortoises, but he was getting closer and closer. And that battle for second place had a, a six cars in it, yeah. and, and he was right on the tail. You felt two or three more laps, he'd have picked off one or two. This was a little bit rude from Stefan Raquelmi, knocking Olivier Lombard into a spin. The 83 HTP car still managed to go on to win the Silver Cup, despite losing a couple of seconds there. Sean Walkinshaw was attacking towards the end of the race, but outside line at uh, the right-hander of Hawthorns is always tricky to do, but no one could stop Laurence Van Thor and Robin Freitz taking victory in the qualifying race here in Brands Hatch. We'll be back on air live from 3pm for the main race which gets underway at 20 past 3.